welcome to the Allison Bramlett podcast. I am so excited to be joined today again with my mom, Jackie Pope, and we're wearing matching shirts. So if you're seeing this, yay. If not, just know that we are wearing matching delivering love shirts because we believe that God's love, he delivers it to us. He delivers us from things through us, and then he wants to deliver his love also to others through us. You know, uh, I have never been in jail, so I've never had to have a jail break. But I have been in jail in my mind. Yeah, come on. And, uh, you know, that's usually most of us are in, we are held prisoner in our own thinking. Yes. Our own fears, our own depressions, our own insecurities, our own past that the enemy can use to cause us to be in bondage. Yes. And, Allison, I love when you always say about you have to break your own Breakout has to be through the Word of God. It does. Which brings you to not be a victim. But to be a victor. Yes. And you know, Mom, I was thinking today, James, I love the book of James, probably because I am a competitive talker. No. And, yes, Mother, I am. <laughs> and um, the book of James deals a lot with the mouth. Oh. But it deals with a lot more than that. And it's just, right. anyway, I love actually the entire Bible. I just love the Word. But James 1, verses 2 and 3 says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, and some say any kinds, all trials, because you know the testing of your faith produces perseverance. And it goes on and talks about grows maturity yes. in you yes. and different things. I think we're living in a time where we really want people to think, man, they're maturing. They're being successful, which I actually think significance is success. But they're looking at stuff and they're thinking, how can I make things happen? Even the jailbreak. It's our own insecurities, our own frustrations. And when you get to where you can really count everything a joy, Mm. count even those hard times, those broken times, your right decisions, your wrong decisions, really get to a place where you're like, I'm focusing on Jesus. And that's That's the joy. That's the joy. Because you're not, you're, you're, taking your attention off yourself yeah. what other people may label you at and you're putting it on jesus and when you get yourself under the word and to say lord what do you call me yeah lord what do you label me mm-hmm. child of god joint heir yeah. heir of god more than a conqueror above and not beneath because most of mm-hmm. us you know, it says for us not to think too highly of ourselves, so not to be a big shot. Yeah. But I've not met a whole bunch of big shots. Now, there's some I've met that's, that's big right. shots and think more highly of themselves. But most of us have a hard time thinking that we are who Christ has made us. That's right, us. we are. We, we, may, we have some defense mechanisms that show up yes. differently in all yes. of our lives. But I think everybody deals with some stuff. You know, and I was thinking, Mom, it doesn't say... To feel joy. No. It says to count joy. Count joy. Do you count, Lord, thank you for this? And I really think joy comes from getting thankful oh, instead of time. judgmental. Yes. And such a key to victory. It is. Thanks Thanksgiving is, I believe, the one of the main ingredients of your setting your at altitude of your mind. The altitude on, on and the attitude. Yes. <laughs> That's right. Setting your it says setting your affection on things above. I think your thankful heart sets that affection on things above. You know, I think about David who was on the balcony. David knew a lot of times that there, it was important to go to high places because he met with God in high places. Cool things happen. You got to get it. But in high places, here's one thing that can happen. You can get in a high place and look more to heaven yes. and get focused on Jesus and what the vision is and what God has for you. Or you can get to a high place and look down on everybody else. Yes, and you can have a wrong and, attitude and about his, yourself. That's right. And you can look down on yourself. You can oh, look yeah. down on other people. You can get yourself in a sin situation, which yes. David does. But how the Lord's saying, I really want you to count me in on everything. Mm. Make room yeah. for me. Yeah, because when you have the thing, what's so amazing is we're sitting here naturally. Yeah. But in Father God's eye, I'm seated in Christ in heavenly places far above principalities, powers, dominions, anything that would cause destruction. I'm seated above that, and it's supposed to be 
under my feet yes. because we are the body of Christ. The Lord is the head of the so church, good. but we are his body. But so many of us do not have that mindset. And I'll be honest with you. Most of the time people are off. Oh, Jesus was in the room, which I'm so thankful. He said, I've got something better. I'm sending my Holy yes. Spirit, the same spirit that raised me from the dead is now going to be in you, yes. that life-giving spirit, which is one-third God. Yes. But if you really think about being seated with him in heavenly places, if you really think about that, you would be focused on him and not the stuff going on below oh, you. Right, because you already know that, guess what? The Lord has the strategy. Every time. The plan. The victory. So, and, all he's, and he's going to give it to you if you just go, what is it? Lord, what's the, what's the plan for this? Okay, so here's the thing. I've been wanting to count things joy, working on stuff, not wanting to be yes. a victim, wanting to be a victor. You know, different. your perspective is yes. your reality. So and true. And here's something that 1 Samuel 15, 22 and 23, for like 15 to 20 years has been a study of the Bible mm -hmm. that I do. Over and over and over again. Because it's, this is where Saul gets in a little bit of sin and yes. stuff goes on. He loses his authority. I mean, he's still a king, but he loses it. He loses his anointing. Yes. And it says that rebellion is as witchcraft and stubbornness is as idolatry. Wow. And I am telling you so many times. I even just met with someone recently, and she and I were talking, and she said, you know, we're stubborn. And I said, you know, that's idolatry. Yeah. And she That's said, not something for us to be bragging breaking about you know a lot of times just i have a stubborn personality right and we think it's almost like i'm wearing a badge of honor to be stubborn yes and instead of knowing that that's one of the tools that the enemy come on uses to bring destruction and to cause you to make wrong choices stubbornness will cause you to, to lose make, your anointing yeah and to make wrong choices it will it it messes with you and so for me i know in my own life i've asked the lord i'm like i don't want to be stubborn i want to submit to the lord and then submitting one to another yes. in love in love i don't want to have stubbornness i want to have a spirit of true yes. submission and so mom i've watched you and dad over the years but i've watched you with me i've watched you with other women just be lovely tell me this how do you fight stubbornness because i i mean this is off the cuff oh, so we all, I mean, we all have that streak in us yeah. Oh, I think we're born with it. Yeah. I think um, we come yeah. out because stubborn. We, we, because yeah. we 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 want our way. Yeah. And I think uh, the more sensitive you are to the Word of God, that you see. Okay. And so you're talking about the fruits of the Spirit. Yes. And the fruits of the Spirit, which is the character of Christ, is different from the gifts. There are nine gifts, nine fruit. Well, the gift is a gift. But the fruit is the character that's being yes. developed in my life. So at one time, I was stubborn. So that means, being stubborn means I dig my heels You might have been in. haughty, selfish, proud, or rude. Yeah. Is that what you're talking yeah. about? No, and I'm just saying, me you too. Just, you just dig your heels in. My way or no I way. I may go, but it's going to be with a struggle. Because <laughs> I am stubborn about and, hey, this. Hey, <laughs> I'm doing it, but my attitude yeah. is not, not happy, happy about, about it. it. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I think when you get in the Word, and we've all been that way yes and then when you see the fruit of it over and over yes. and over that it produces stubbornness produces strife it does and confusion and then every evil work i can actually come think in. it causes you to be rageful and angry i was oh, thinking yes. you know you see saul has fits of rage anger and almost irrational thoughts. Yes. I think when we become, His, begin to that, that stubbornness. stubbornness. Now, look, we all fight it, but I'm talking let it stay in you, manifest in us, grow. Don't and, yield and rule, to this. And rule you. Because you have to yield to the Spirit of God. Yes. I have to yield. Okay, we can even be stubborn. It says in the Word to forgive. Oh, yes. These are commandments. It says to love. It says to the Lord's, these, and we take the Word of God like it's a suggestion. When it's a commandment, and that's really stubbornness. Yes. It's it's really a worship of, well, he didn't mean that for me, obviously. But I realized over the years, the Lord just started dealing with me about, Allison, your will, your way has to yield to mine, just like Jesus yes. did in the garden. And I really think the way you break stubbornness first is by yielding it to the... Yielding coming your, to the cross. That's I'm right. really coming to Calvary. Coming yes, to the Mom. cross and kneeling down and saying, Lord... 
I surrender. Here I am. Here I am. I surrender. I don't want to do it my way any longer. No. I want to do it your way. And that's the beginning of your walk. Now, you can get up and still go back and become stubborn and be selfish. and do, yeah. or, or either you present yourself to the Word, to the Spirit of God. And uh, it's amazing if you have a quick temper. You know, I've got a short fuse. I've had a short fuse all my life. You know, and you make an excuse of that's just you. Well, you're in your Word. You're studying. The Bible says a soft answer turns, turns away wrath. It says who can... You can't even reason with an angry person. Person. So if you feel like the people around you are saying, I can't have a conversation yeah. with you, I can't reason with you, and you're the angry person, that's got to go. Yeah. And I've been the angry person yeah. before. And you have I mean, to realize, I, okay, Lord, here I am. And at that moment, you have to own up. Yes. Take responsibility. Here I am. And, Lord, I've been angry all my life, so therefore I wear that anger like a like a robe. Well, it's actually like an armor suit. Yeah. It becomes a, a defense mechanism. Yes. And, and so we then, don't know it. instead, you have to, uh, to offend, what is it, defend that sin in your life. Yes. Come on. Because we are great lawyers for our sin and the things that we like. We have to take the word and go, I see that. That is sin. Even though I may be comfortable with it in my life, Lord, you're not. Well, you know, I even think about this. And help me. We get uncomfortable with God's peace because we've been raised in chaos. Correct. And a lot of times people will start getting a peaceful life. And even believers, they'll make even believing hard because they need something to be hard. Yes. They'll make something chaotic that doesn't have to be chaotic. Because peace scares them. Because they're afraid of peace. Yes. And, and they yes. they don't even realize it because to let God have control. And, you know, yes. I've learned that over the years. And I don't think any of us have this perfectly no. down. I think we're in process. We're all growing. It's a journey. This life is a journey. But I was just thinking, count all things joy. And, man, we start thinking about that as a sickness, as a loss of a car. I'm thinking of just my attitude, getting it under control. Yes. I think sometimes we, we get so focused on the bigger things that we're missing, the little foxes that... Amen. Are spoiling our Amen. minds that trigger our cycles. Yes, that cause us to fall back into wrong relationships. It, okay, I mean the same people that can talk to you. I love you and Dad. Yes. So I'm so thankful I have um, in my home and in my life and on Sunday morning the same people all the time. But you know I've seen so many people over the years where they're able to share. This is what you need to do in your marriage. They can preach the gospel, but then they don't have real peace in their home. Mm -hmm. And they don't have a real love for their spouse. And they've always got a plan B. And I'm like, okay, there's something happening here. Yeah. There's something off. And I've seen you let joy in all circumstances. I've seen you submit to the Lord, submit, you and dad submit mm -hmm. to each other, submitting one to another. I've seen you not be frustrated with things but i'm like you're choosing it and because people yeah. are oh no that's their personality oh no, no it no. ain't we all have it to, isn't we all have to cast down yeah we all have to say mm, no to ourselves come on it's most of the time it's no to our flesh yes mama and when god is trying to say let the boy let the barriers down uh, so dad told me one time quit he said, strong arming the lord and the dad lord told me one time he said or one don't. another we can strong yeah. arm one another because if you've been hurt you don't even know but you're strong arm god's saying i'm sending you something you're you're strong arm it will. instead of going okay i'm gonna i'm gonna let them well, love we me. even strong arm it if it doesn't come the way we wanted it to if it doesn't look exactly oh that's but dad true. told me one time he said it takes two to argue allison oh yeah I thought, well, I'm, I'm that good. I don't know. I might be the first person. I'm arguing with myself. I, I, there's <laughs> my flesh and my spirit right now. <laughs> but I've yes. done some things like that. So question, as we kind of close out today, people are listening, and they're in relationships, and maybe there's some stubbornness going on. What's something that you can remember feeling a little stubborn on that the Holy Spirit said, Jackie, don't do that in your marriage or don't do that with your children or with a friendship or maybe even at work. Because this is not just for, this is for all situations. I'm saying don't be stubborn. Mm. Lord, haven't we been stubborn in so many areas? Well, I can tell you like 25 right now. I, could, I can you start know, naming them. You know, it's... Uh, like you probably have like a much cleaner... Yeah. You've been so not stubborn for so long. Probably your idea, you're having to probably go back in your brain. I think. I think. Well, just ask a younger woman and um, she can come up with a few. <laughs> quicker 
You want to tell you what I was stubborn about what? one time? The pool chairs being in certain places. Like having an yes. idea that something had to look a certain way or it wasn't right. Oh, and you know. Uh, I'm serious. And you know, I've just had surgery. Yes. And uh, so the, they said, don't pick up anything over five pounds. It was crazy. So I am in the living room, and the chair's off a half an inch or inch. And I'm thinking, I can't move that chair. I'm going to call Gregory to come in there. And I, the Lord said, why is that inch or half an inch so important to you? This is what I'm talking Mom, I'm so glad like, you have a recent I, story. That I makes me like, feel so good. Uh, Lord, I don't know. <laughs> I, just, I just want it moved. Just, he said, it looks great. Why are you being concerned about that? It's, it's so amazing because I want it my way. Yeah. I want everything to look like I want it to look. I want it to feel like I want it to feel. I want it to be in the And situation. I'm telling you, I and fight we that. Have to, and I was like, Lord, help me. It's, mm-hmm. And guess what? To this day, and it's been eight or nine weeks now, I'm not asked Gregory to move that chair. And you haven't And guess what? It. Every time I go by there, I guess what? I look at that chair and I think, I wish it was an inch closer. But I'm having to. The Lord is working something out of you. No. I think He's working things out of me. Yeah, you can let the a little Lord thing. Use Isn't that it. so little? So little, and you're thinking, "Oh my gosh!" But we make things so little, so big. Yeah. So something sweet that we've been doing is I love taking communion at our church, yes. and we've all been coming to the altar and doing a little bit more and asking families to come down, look different ways. Yes. I believe you can take it with a French fry and your fruit punch. I've done that right. before too. But as a church faith family, we've been sharing in communion a little bit more regularly lately. And I love that it's been different every time. And what I love about that is the Lord's okay with that. He's okay. And, and he's I really, think sometimes he's really it's us that are not, the, He's really outside our box. Yeah, okay. So he's unlimited. He doesn't have to have a certain song to move no. on. He doesn't he's have to have moved. a certain light <laughs> setting to move on. No, he's already he moved. Have to, keep he doesn't Jake, have to have I you moved. stand in the same place. Right. Look, I love a prayer closet. But I also want you to know he just likes talking to you. And so I think about my grandbabies that I love being with them in the car, in the bathroom, in the pool. On the golf cart. In the golf cart, in the yard. And never do I think we need to be in a special place before we can have real conversation. We're doing life together. I want to share with you. Yes. Religion will tell you you've got to be in a certain place. But Jesus says, I want to do life with you. Yes. I want to live through you. I'm on to actually, Gregory and I was riding motorcycles, and Gregory was, uh, said, all at once he just threw up his arm. He said, Lord, I just, when I get to see you, I want you to go, Gregory, I'm so glad I got to do life through you. That was such a revelation. He just threw his arms up in the air. We were yes. going about 50 miles an hour. I was like, Gregory, get your arms back down. But he was shouting, Lord, I want, I want you to be, yes, well done. But thank you, Gregory, for letting me live and do life through you. That. And that's what Jesus wants to do life through you today. And so when you, you and when you give in to his way. Oh, it's so sweet. It's better. You don't you're better. not losing anything. You're gaining everything. Gaining so much more. So I would I would encourage you, read first Samuel fifteen, twenty two. Read James one. Yes. Get in the word. Read the whole book of James. Uh, is it's a quick read. And um Ask the Holy Spirit, say, Lord, show me, is there an yes. area that I'm strong arming you in? Is there an area that you're asking me to come and say, look at me, Start, stop gazing down and looking down on everything or That's criticizing right. or judging all those things? Stay focused on me. Now, the Lord may tell you to move the chair. Yes. And it's okay to move chairs. But you don't. But if it's undoing you, you might not leave that it chair's undone. chair's not tormenting you. That's right. I'm all, I'm just going to leave that chair there till it just don't even worry me whether it's that half inch up or half inch back. I'm at peace. And that's what's so amazing. We let little things spoil the joy of so many wonderful You know, we things. let it spoil us being together as a church family. And it may be a little else. thing. It may be you let it spoil between your spouse. Yes. You may let it spoil between a friend or even a coworker. Today, you this, love first. Jump that's right. in. We're praying for you. Thanks for joining us. Um, we love Amen. hanging out with our faith family. Yes. And so I'm honored that you even listened to the Allison Bramlett podcast. Yes. I would listen to if I was listening to my mom all the time. <laughs> and um, 
share with us what God's doing in your life. Please reach out to us at Covenant Church. Our hearts and our doors are always open. You can find one of us here. And we believe the best is yet to come. And that God's got great things ahead going from glory to glory, faith to faith. And we're praying praying. for you. You pray for us. We pray for one another. Yes. We pray for one another. And we Isn't it so sweet? Let's just, Allison, just pray right now. It's closing out. Father, I just thank you. Thank you for your son, Jesus. Yes. I thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit that leads, guides, and directs us. Let us be spirit-led. Yes, Lord. Not flesh-led. Help us, Lord, to know. We yield ourselves. We surrender and submit ourselves to you. Lord, we look up. Yes. We look at you. Our eyes are focused on you. We're not looking to the left. We're not looking to the right. We're not looking behind us. But we are looking up and toward you. And I thank you, Lord, that miracles are taking place. You're healing hearts. Yes, Lord You're Jesus. healing minds right now. You're healing bodies. You're bringing restoration to those areas. I thank you, Lord, right now as people are listening that have been hard on themselves. They've been um, beating themselves up for all their wrong past mistakes. I ask you, Holy Spirit, right now, just to go in and show them what the blood does, that it covers. Yes, Lord Jesus. And show them that not only does it cover, but it also makes a way for a great future. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.